गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स सो आई गेस इन द प्रीवियस सेशन वी टॉकिंग अबाउट वेव गाइड्स एंड आई सेड वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट टू मेजर काइंड्स ऑफ वेव गाइड्स दैट आर रेक्टेंगुलर एंड सर्कुलर वेव गाइड्स ऑफ कोर्स वी आल्सो डेल्ट विद द पैरेलल प्लेट वेव गाइड to understand the analysis first okay so that is about uh, that's that's completely the fourth uh, fifth unit but right now we are stepping into the final unit that is a sixth unit so of course sixth unit is the extension of the wave gauge itself so the complete wave gauge uh, and the because there in the fifth unit we learned about uh, single conductor guide guiding structures like rectangular and uh, circular wave gauges here we are going to again come back to uh, two conductor structures okay the the structures which we are going to deal with are in this unit are basically oh, one second right so the structures which we are going to deal with in this uh, unit are uh, coaxial cables uh, or coaxial lines and uh, all i told you we'll be dealing with uh, micro strip lines and something called strip lines the common thing in all these guiding structures of all these guiding structures the common thing is every structure has two conductors okay so two conductors implies that you will definitely have a transverse electromagnetic mode okay means there is a possibility depending upon the shape uh, there is a chance of uh, propagation of transverse electromagnetic wave on these structures also along with the t and tm modes but we'll look into those things but these are the things which you will be learning uh, in this uh, unit of course uh, because we already laid down the analysis of analyzing what kind of modes are propagating and elanti modes propagate out uh, uh, whether a te mode tem mode is propagating or te is propagating or transverse magnetic is propagating the analysis we already laid them out right the analysis anta already undi we have already done analysis for rectangular and circular coordinate systems we need to apply the same kind of analysis to these systems also so the analysis is not going to change only the results are going to change right depending upon the guiding geometry you get different propagation constants you get different uh, uh, wave impedances you get different attenuation constants and cut off frequencies so those are the things which change so those are the things which we want to study also because at the end of the day what we want to know is uh, at a given frequency or for a given communication system what kind of uh, guiding scheme is better right because not a communication system maybe for example uh, you want to connect your transmitting circuits to an antenna which is far away then what kind of uh, you need a wave guide right because you are say for example uh, Uh, you are uh, you are you are uh, are transmitting and receiving uh, transmitting and receiving circuitry or say for example in your uh, main block okay but whereas your antenna is kept far away in order to reduce the interferences with the buildings around it okay so usually uh, uh, deep space networks and and the antennas are kept at a really larger distances okay or you even if you take a very very big parabolic dish antennas okay for example i can give you something like on atms okay on atms you always see a parabolic dish not only on an atm even if you think about uh, in your home also uh, if you want to have uh, you know tata sky itla lagapothe or that sun tv or 
సన్ టీవీ డైరెక్ట్ ఐ థింక్ ఇంకేదో ఉంది సమ్ అదర్ డిష్ యాంటెనియస్ బేసిక్లీ సో ఆ టీవీ నెట్వర్క్స్ మీరు శాటిలైట్ టీవీకి ఇఫ్ యూ ఇఫ్ యూ ఇఫ్ యూ సబ్స్క్రైబ్ ఫర్ ఇట్ దే విల్ గే వి బ్రింగ్ ఏ అన్ యాంటినా అండ్ దే విల్ ఇన్స్టాల్ ఇట్ ఆన్ యువర్ రూఫ్ రూఫ్ రైట్ సో మీ బిల్డింగ్ రూఫ్ మీద ఎక్కడో చోట ఇన్స్టాల్ చేస్తారు సో అక్కడి నుంచి సిగ్నల్ అన్నది ఇఫ్ ఇట్ హ్యాస్ టు కమ్ టు యువర్ హోమ్ ఓకే దే పుడ్ ఏ కోయాక్సెల్ కేబుల్ టు డూ ఇట్ ఆర్ దే బేసిక్లీ యూజ్ ఎ గైడింగ్ స్ట్రక్చర్ దే నీడ్ ఏ గైడింగ్ స్ట్రక్చర్ సో వాట్ గైడింగ్ స్ట్రక్చర్ ఇస్ ఫీజిబుల్ మేక్స్ ద డిఫరెన్స్ రైట్ sometimes you want to bend the guiding structure you want because coaxial cable is easy to send it through bend and you can send it through many places but if you want to use a rectangular wave guide then it becomes a very difficulty for installation purpose and all but if you want to handle very high power then a rectangular wave guide is more useful compared to a coaxial cable so there are these kind of differences which which puts them in separate pockets like uh, for one some kind of applications one wave guide is more appreciate means more appropriate than the other one okay to understand which one is more appropriate obviously you need to uh, solve for you need to solve for uh, i mean you need to understand what what are the uh, various properties of this guiding structures right right so today we'll start uh, discussing about this uh, new guiding structure that is the coaxial cable so sometimes uh, it's called uh, coaxial cable sometimes it's called coaxial line or sometimes it's simply called coax okay it doesn't matter what you call it uh, the property means when you can call a guiding structure coaxial line is if uh, if you are in a uh, conductor i mean the axis the geometrical axis of your inner conductor and outer conductor if they are aligning with each other and the children the center the center lo na conductor ki what is the axis ante this is your axis right so this is your uh, axis what is the axis for the outer conductor and adu kuda same line med untadi so because the axis of both conductors lie on a same line so usually they it is called coaxial so the term coaxial comes from the inner conductor and outer conductor sharing a same geometrical axis okay so that is why we call it a coaxial cable and in general if you see coaxial cables the general uh, practical coaxial cables mostly there are many types of coaxial cables the most uh, uh, general one is like this uh, you will have a central conductor and out and around the central conductor you usually have some dielectric material okay and around the dielectric material you have again a metallic shield and out of that you have a plastic jacket it means it means uh, this is protection uh, Uh, from the outside world so that you don't want the people to touch the wire or so okay so outside world ki uh, means they you put a plastic uh, holding on the outside okay so this is this is all you have okay but practical ga enti ante if you ever saw a coaxial cable eppudaina me tv wires avi chusinappudu center lo wire untadi outside wire enti ante it looks like a braided kind of wire okay so braided uh, wires untayi and end and the wires are like uh, braided and it's like they are stitched like this and you can see it is shown here uh, so it laga em antaru e like you can e uh, clo- clothes so avi tayar chese tappudu usually people wave uh, this clothes like uh, in bands right or i think maybe the girls also know about the when they so few people they braid their hair in this way right usually uh and and uh, why do we have such kind of what uh, actual ga inner conductor okadu undali outer conductor inko okadu undali kan outer conductor pettukunda em chestarante itla like some wires ni teeskuni itla like they braid them and they 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 tie them okay edoka jada mesh type lo they do it 
right so when they do do that and they, what is the necessity of doing that instead of taking a, a solid kind of conductor and ikkada oka conductor pettal kabatti oka metal theesukoni conductor pettachu kada metal pettukunda itla wire type enduku theesukuntunnaru ante the reason is uh, when you do this it becomes more flexible okay you you can bend the wire okay you can bend the wire or you can turn the wire that makes it more flexible but if you take metallic complete metallic shield like this what happens is it will be very rigid okay so that is no good like and it is always it is almost like a rectangular wave gate what use you can get okay so our rigidity unte enti ante meer bend cheyadam chaala ibbandi avutadi so appudu problem avutadi kabatti so usually they use this kind of uh, meshing kind of braiding wires but there is always uh, a little bit of leakage because of this braiding wires but the it will be minimal ఓకే సమ్టైమ్స్ ఈవెన్ ఎప్పుడైనా మీరు వైర్ ఓపెన్ చేస్తే ఈ వైర్స్తో పాటు చుట్టూరు ఇంకొక థిన్ ఫాయిల్ ఒకటి పెడతారు ఏ థిన్ మెటాలిక్ ఫాయిల్ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో ప్లేస్డ్ సమ్టైమ్స్ ఇన్ సమ్ వైర్స్ యూజువల్లీ మీన్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ బై ఏ ఈవెన్ మోర్ కాస్ట్లీ వైర్ దే పుట్ ఈవెన్ ఈ బ్రేడెడ్ వైర్స్ పక్కన ఒక మెటాలిక్ ఫాయిల్ కూడా పెడతారు సో ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ అ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ ఎడిషనల్ షీల్డింగ్ సో దాట్ యూ కెన్ యూజ్ ఇట్ ఇంకొంతమంది ఏంటి అంటే దే పుట్ ఈవెన్ మోర్ షీల్డ్ సో దాట్ it is not completely flexible but uh, minimal flexibility untadi so atlaaga depending upon uh, the amount of isolation you want and the shielding kavali anna dani vatti usually the wires uh, are made in different formats okay but the common phenomena is the coaxial phenomena that the center and the outer conductors have share the same uh, geometrical axis so coaxial cables are like a, they are a very big deal in a practical world because most of the applications uh, high frequency applications in order to connect uh, any two circuits or in order to connect antennas or in order to connect any high frequency components the common uh, guiding structure that is used is coaxial cable okay so it is that much famous but of course there are limitations for coaxial cables that is why people went for other kind of guiding structures okay so so to know that at what kind of limitations even and teliyali ante first of all we need to understand what a coaxial cable does right so let us try to find uh, what kind of uh, modes a coaxial cable can propagate because i can see that there are two conductors i can uh, till now for a rectangular wave guide and for a uh, circular wave guide we saw that there is no possibility of a transverse electromagnetic wave and i kept on saying that because it has a single conductor you don't possibly have a solution for your laplacian equation in the transverse plane but now we have a two conductor phenomena uh, so there is a possibility of having a laplacian i mean solution to your laplace equation in the transverse plane so let us start with that analysis so i'll take a coaxial cable so you can see that uh, for the coaxial cable the inner radius uh, is taken as a and the outer radius is taken as b okay and the material is taken as epsilon r so what i want to do is because i want to calculate whether there is a transverse electromagnetic wave or not okay uh, one second uh,
right so i have to do this correction okay so because uh, as you can see that because we are dealing with a wave uh, a, a guiding structure which is uh, circularly symmetric okay it's always better to deal with a coordinate system which is also circularly symmetric that is cylindrical coordinate system so your your coaxial line is something like this okay so the center conductor and your outer conductor is like this so if i take this as z axis so i'm assuming the wave is propagating along the z direction that is in the coaxial cable and uh, then what are the other dimensions and you have rho and you have phi okay so i can assume this is some uh, x axis and y axis uh, so you can see rho is the perpendicular distance and phi is the angle with respect to x axis so i'm going to use uh, the cylindrical coordinate system just i have used it for uh, uh, circular wave gate right for the circular wave gate uh, so here what you have to do is okay i think uh, bad okay so there is also no hz component okay because it's a transverse electromagnetic wave uh, we don't want any ez as well as hz components so if there are uh, no ez and hz components how do you calculate for the transverse components and we need to solve this potential function in the transverse plane so if you remember i have written the transverse equation like this phi x comma y equal to 0 in cartesian coordinate system but here we are dealing in this same equation in uh, cylindrical coordinate system so you need to write it as rho comma phi so ante potential function ni e transverse plane lo calculate cheyalan i want to calculate it in this transverse plane okay so this potential function in transverse plane so here uh, how do you expand the laplacian so this laplacian is also taken in transverse plane so laplacian expand cheste so the laplacian in transverse plane is 1 by rho times of dou by dou rho times of rho of uh, dou by dou rho of uh, phi so this is basically the laplacian expanded in uh, transverse uh, plane okay of course complete laplacian royals ankonde complete laplacian rasina appudu along with these factors you also get uh, uh, dou by dou z square also okay but this is a transverse laplacian so dou square by dou z square undadu okay so our dependency anta teeskune we already derived this equation if you remember to em mode ki analysis derive chesinappudu z direction lo wave velthundi ani anukuntene manaki equation vachindi okay so we have taken that the wave is traveling in z direction then we got this differential equation so we need to solve this differential equation to get the values of the potential function so we need to see if any solution is exist for this kind of case so what is the uh, what are the conditions i can apply here so what what conditions i can apply here is as i can see that uh, uh, we need to take some boundary conditions so because i am assuming that a tm wave solution is happening here if at all a tm wave solutions exist then definitely while tm wave solution exists up there then uh, there will be some potential difference between these two conductors there should be potential difference because there are two conductors each conductor should be at one potential because every conductor is an equi potential okay conductor and it is an equi potential uh, right uh, they are equi potential surfaces if you remember so this this whole surface will be at the same potential and this whole surface should be at the same potential so if i assume that so for the purpose of uh, easy analysis let me take that the inner conductor is at a potential v not and the outer conductor is at a potential zero okay so it does not have to be like that okay you can also solve the same problem by taking this potential as v1 and this potential as v2 and you will still get the same answer because it doesn't matter what is the absolute value of the potential you have for a conductor because we always do our analysis with the potential difference not the absolute potential right so the potential difference that matters so and the kind of center conductor say let me take it as at v0 and this is at zero okay and this is i'm assuming if at all a tm wave exists then these two conductors should be at a different potential okay for a tm wave transverse electromagnetic wave to exist okay so if i do that so if i assume that uh, the inner conductor so the inner conductor is at some potential v not and the outer conductor is at potential zero okay and we know the coordinate system this is x and this is z and y and you can see uh, phi is the angle that you make with the x axis and rho is the radial distance and z is this uh, wave direction okay that is perpendicular to this plane 
so what observation i can make here is okay the boundary conditions usually end in day because if the conductor okay because a conductor is an equipotential surface so you cannot have potential of uh, uh, 1 volt here and you can't have potential of 2 volts here right so because the whole conductor should be at an equipotential okay in this plane particularly i am saying it's a transverse electromagnetic wave and for a transverse electromagnetic wave if you know that we can define potential in the transverse plane okay so transverse plane lo potentials define cheyachu uh and there is a possibility that as z is changing so as you go across the z so for different values of z you can have different potentials okay so for a transverse electromagnetic wave for different values of z you can have different values of potential but in the transverse plane that is in the xy plane okay everywhere you need to have uh, if there is a conductor that conductor should be at the same potential equipotential ondal so if that is a scenario i can see the boundary conditions are not changing with phi okay if the boundaries itself are not changing with phi then i can say the potential function should also not change with phi okay because uh, if it changes with phi then even at the boundary you need to get different values at different angles of phi okay but because that is not going to happen i can assume that maybe because of the symmetry circular symmetry okay maybe the potential is not a function of phi so let us see whether that kind of solution will work out or not so if i do that i have to replace do square by do phi square with zero then you can see that i get an equation like this so what is the solution of this equation so you can see that do by do rho of something is zero so derivative of something is a con zero that means this factor must be a constant right so that must be a constant so if i so the solution of this is a constant right say for example i'll take uh, this as some constant c okay then i have to solve an equation do phi by do rho is equal to c by rho okay so what is the solution ante 1 by rho ki i know you guess already the solution is ln of rho okay so you can see this becomes the solution to this equation so now to calculate this constants let us substitute the boundary conditions so let me put at rho is equal to a rho equal to a and that is your inner conductor so at the inner conductor is at a potential v not kabatte c plus ln of d should be equal to v not and the outer conductor at rho is equal to b the potential is zero so c times of ln of b plus d equal to zero so from here i can say that d is equal to uh, minus c times of ln of b and of c so i can put it there and uh, if i take c common i get uh, v not is equal to uh, it becomes uh, i mean c times of uh, ln of uh, a by b okay because you get ln of a minus ln of b okay so we use the principles of logarithms uh, and uh, we can say that uh, okay maybe i'll substitute d and take them but touch minus c times of ln of uh, b and of c so you take c common you get ln of a minus ln of b so that i can write it as ln of a by b so v not times of v not is nothing but c times so i can just c and end up c is nothing but v not times of ln of a by b so once i have c i can also calculate uh, d what is uh, the value of d and a uh, okay d is nothing but minus c times of i already have minus c times of ln of b okay so if i put it there what happens okay so Uh, if i put the value of c i get minus v not times of uh, 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 divided by of course maybe we'll put d and a kada if i put d and a in the place of d if, if i put c times of ln of b okay this total phi of rho simply becomes c common this the ln of rho by b and out there okay but what is c c is v not by ln of a by b so finally you get phi of rho okay so i get the potential function so i have a solution in fact and i can see that the potential function is not a function of phi and i get a solution to this differential equation so in fact a transverse electromagnetic wave can exist uh, uh, on this coaxial line okay so if the potential function exists how do you calculate the electric field so what i want is the transverse component so electric field kavali ante i need to take the gradient of it and i have to take the gradient even in uh, cylindrical coordinate system because we are doing the analysis in cylindrical coordinate system and it is a transverse gradient or else if it is a complete gradient you might have seen here do by do z also but as we have derived previously 
we are doing analysis completely in the transverse plane so the the transverse components of the electric field is given by the transverse gradient negative of the transverse gradient of the potential function so i can see the potential is not a function of phi so this term goes out so all you have to do is you have to take uh, the derivative with respect to rho okay so if you take a derivative with respect to rho then you get the transverse component so if you want to write the complete electric field so you simply have whatever electric component you have you need to multiply it with e power minus j beta z and then you get the complete format of the wave right so if you take the derivative with respect to b okay if you take the derivative with respect to b uh, uh, means if you take derivative with respect to rho and uh, you put a minus sign before you basically end up uh, with an answer like this you get v not divided by ln of a times 1 by rho times of e power minus j beta z times of rho cap so you can see what is the electric field so what i can observe is if, if the center conductor is at a potential zero and the outer conductor is at a potential uh, i mean zero and the center conductor is at a potential v naught then the electric field is completely radially outwards everywhere okay and the expression of the electric field is given like this so this is your electric field so under the coaxial line lo electric field anta etla untadante it starts from the center conductor and it ends on the outer conductor and the electric field everywhere goes radially outwards and the electric field is a function of rho ante meaning enti what does it mean so that means in this transverse plane for example if i cut this plane like this so at the boundary say for example at the boundary of the electric field is 5 okay as it goes out slowly its value decreases ikkada 4 untadi ikkada 3 untadi ikkada 1 untadi okay so the electric field everywhere is like this 5 4 3 1 5 4 3 1 so ante enti so 5 to change avutundanna if you go around the value is not going to change it has a symmetry in the phi direction but as you go radially outwards the electric field magnitude is going to decrease as a function of 1 by rho okay so that is what your electric field expression is saying about okay so with this electric field expression once i have the electric field expression i can say that there is no e phi component so e phi component is zero so if you have the electric field how do you get the magnetic field so to get the magnetic field i need to know the intrinsic impedance okay because it's a transverse electromagnetic wave uh, the intrinsic impedance is eta which is nothing but square root of square root of mu by epsilon okay so if i have the value of eta okay i can easily calculate the intrinsic impedance right but the problem is whether the intrinsic impedance is eta or not i don't know means usually i think it is eta okay uh, but what is the value of this eta okay adhe ikkada question now okay so to get the magnetic field we have the expression if you remember the expression for magnetic field is like this 1 by eta times of uh, z cross of e bar of course the expression was like this if you remember for a wave for a transverse electromagnetic wave we got this was the expression in the wave uh, theory we have derived it like this of course the k bar can be written as magnitude of k which is nothing but maybe the magnitude of k bar is let us assume it is k so it is k by omega mu and of course uh, what is the direction of propagation k bar ki direction of propagation ikkada z ga batti you get z cap types of e bar so basically k into z cap here is nothing but your k bar in this scenario okay wave vector so ikkada k by omega mu ante so k ante because omega square root of mu epsilon ga batti divided by omega uh, square root of mu ante you get square root of epsilon by mu which is nothing but 1 by intrinsic impedance so that is the value which you have here so 1 by eta times of z cross of e bar and that's the answer okay so you can see that uh, z cross of e bar so you have to take uh, cross product with rho cap uh, when you take z cross of this rho cap you simply end up with phi cap and this is your uh, field expression right so this is your expression for magnetic field so now if you ask me so the electric fields are going radially outwards and in this plane the magnetic fields are going in phi direction phi cap direction ante okay? at every point they are going circularly around it so you can see there is no theta dependency anywhere so there is no uh, uh, phi component or z component here of course uh, z and z are zero always uh, so you could have only two come sorry there is only e rho and e5 h5 components for a transverse electromagnetic wave on your coaxial cable 
so with these magnetic field components so now if you ask me what is a current that is going through this wire ee wire length current elthundi ante so from the amperes lo you know if you want to calculate the current you simply have to take a loop uh, okay and you have to ask me what is a of course what is a amperes law from your amperes law loop integral of h bar dot dl bar is equal to uh, if you remember it is surface integral of j bar dot ds bar of course if you don't take uh, the displacement currents into uh, picture here so if you assume that dot d by dot is not there okay uh, then uh, you have the surface integral of j bar dot ds bar is nothing but the current that is cutting through that surface right so and then for example if i take uh, uh, if i take a, a loop a loop like this a circular loop like this and if you ask me what is a current cutting through this ante say ee conductor lo pass avutana current i ani current ankonde so that i current should be equal to the loop integral of h bar dot dl bar around this around this line ee path meda h bar dot dl bar ki equal avvali right so that is what your maxwell equation or your ampere's law is saying okay so if that is a plane if that is a case of course you might say sir aka do d by do t kuda untadu kada ante yeah it should also be there surface integral of do d by do t okay dot ds bar jayali okay because d annadi if you see ante ee surface tisukunna ankonde deniki surface attach chesinappudu ds bar ana vector lo you get because normal to the surface is z cap okay but the magnetic the electric field does not have z z component what happens the z the electric field only have row component okay so when you do dot product of row cap and z cap that that goes to zero so it doesn't matter when you write the uh, ampere's law of course corrected ampere's law enti ante del cross of h bar is equal to j plus dot d by dot t okay and of course uh, if you want uh, the integral form the integral form is line integral of h bar dot dl bar is equal to surface integral of j bar dot ds bar plus uh, do by do t times of uh, surface integral of d bar dot ds bar okay so here uh, what i'm saying is d bar dot ds bar goes to zero and this is nothing but the current that is going in this conductor i so this goes to zero so i say i is equal to loop integral of h bar dot dl bar okay so with that uh what we can uh, write here is we have the expression for the currents here we have the expression for the current so if let me put the expression for current here and because the current is not ch- going to change so dl bar and nana dl bar ante idigondi path me dl bar enti so on the circular path what is dl bar so dl bar uh, can you tell me what is dl bar on this path circular path 2d5 Rho times of uh, d5 times of uh, phi cap is your dl bar. Okay. So, in the cylindrical coordinate system, you can see it is a circular path. On the circular path, z is not changing, rho is not changing. Only phi is changing. Phi change out, but rho d5 is asked. So, dl bar is what is that? Rho d5 times of phi cap. so dl bar achindi kabatti h bar dot dl bar ante you put rho d5 uh, phi cap okay and your rho of course your phi is changing from 0 to 2 pi because it's a circular path okay and you have to do here ante ikkada phi cap the dot product chel h bar ni and what is happening here is because this integration does not change with phi why it will not depend because you can see that the function is not a function means h bar is not a function of phi so integration chesinappudu it is simply you get 2 pi so 0 to pi to d5 into you get a 2 pi 2 pi times of rho and the gabat rho and the magnitude of the h5 component which is h5 okay so integration simply becomes like that and if you write the h5 component here so your integration answer becomes 1 by eta times of 2 pi v0 by ln of v by a into e power minus a so in this transverse plane if you ask me for this wave okay what is the ratio of voltage by current so if you look if you look at this this looks like uh, something times of uh, something times of e power minus beta z so it is like i not into e power minus j beta z la vandu so what is the ratio so you can see that the i not here is nothing but 1 by eta times of 2 pi ln of v not so i can ask you what is the z not okay which is v not by not ante a plane lo voltage ki akkada plane lo velthina current ki ratio teeskunte okay 
it is nothing but the characteristic impedance of this line right because it's there is a transverse electromagnetic wave is propagating we can define voltage and currents here so when you can define in voltage and currents we need to we can use transmission line analysis so when you say you can use transmission line analysis then uh, i can ask you what is the characteristic impedance of the line so what is the characteristic impedance of this line and it is nothing but eta by 2 pi times of ln of b by a you can see okay so uh, so let me uh, uh, write this characteristic impedance here okay so this is a transverse electromagnetic wave so the characteristic impedance is eta eta ante enta eta ante i can say it is a eta naught times of square root of mu r by epsilon r okay so uh, if if i assume the material does not have any uh, magnetic properties then i can take mu r as 1 so then i can write that it is a square root of mu r by epsilon r so here z naught is simply eta naught which is what 120 pi okay eta naught into 120 pi beta sure. so if i put 120 pi divided by square root of epsilon r into 2 pi times ln of b by a okay so your pi pi and 60 you get 60 so you the final formula simply looks like this so 60 by square root of epsilon r ln of b by a okay so this is your characteristic impedance z naught so you basically you have assumed that everything is lossless here okay and you have calculated what kind of characteristic impedance i can get for the line and you can take a beta nadi you can see the propagation constant is taken as a as beta not as gamma okay ikkada alpha attenuation constant same this color so lossless case lo uh, what is a kind of uh, uh, wave impedance or the characteristic impedance you get is this this number so that is why i have already told you that wave impedance varu characteristic impedance varu and definition marchan right so if you wave analysis you define uh, for electric and magnetic fields you define that uh, wave impedance intrinsic impedance and for tatm modes we are defined the wave impedance and uh, the characteristic impedance is for a transmission line analysis okay and uh, which is nothing but the ratio of voltage and currents and the impedance value we get for this line is eta by 2 pi of ln of b by a so this is a very important expression which i want you to remember okay because uh, this expression uh, based on this expression uh, you can find uh, many questions in competitive exams also so because what i can see here is the ratio of b by a decides what kind of impedance i can have it doesn't matter what is the radius of a okay and then you know for example let me take two cases say a is equal to two centimeters and b is equal to four centimeters this one i'll take another wire which is a is equal to four centimeters but b is equal to eight centimeters okay the thing is both wires will have same characteristic impedance because the b by a ratio is same okay so what is the difference here and first case lo wire uh, two centimeter radius inner than the outer the four centimeter than quantity is our outer the four centimeters on the and inner the four centimeters on the outer the eight centimeters on the okay you don't wear like the same characteristic impedance under the end now and then sir the wire chala pathaga on the other bundle on the thing okay but the one to them and put in center later they what we have what we have here is it doesn't matter what is the radius of inner conductor or outer conductor it is always the ratio that defines what kind of impedance i can have okay definitely impedance is an issue characteristic impedance because that kind of impedance you take decides whether you can match it to a load or not right so ikkada chuddam ante em impedance values this calls ostadi annadi but because as we have derived that a transverse electromagnetic wave can exist what is the important property of a transverse electromagnetic wave ante the transverse electro for a transverse electromagnetic wave the cutoff frequency is zero right the cutoff frequency is zero because k is exactly equal to beta or that is square root of omega times the square root of mu epsilon in japan so there is no cutoff frequency for uh, transverse electromagnetic wave so what is the dominant mode on and the mode with the lowest cutoff frequency and on a coaxial line it is nothing but a transverse electromagnetic wave so the dominant mode on a coaxial cable is transverse electromagnetic wave so i might ask you what, what is the 
means what are the advantages of transverse electromagnetic wave em advantages unnai can you tell me any one advantage i have told you before the, with the transverse electromagnetic wave voltage current linkage sir yes we can deal with voltage and currents very good any other more bandwidth sir very good amma uh, sure very uh, more bandwidth you can deal with more bandwidth if you are dealing because it starts from lower cut off frequency of zero there is a lot of bandwidth you can use if you are dealing with tm wave any other any other uh, advantage we have for tm wave Yes, the other advantage which I have told you is uh, about the dispersion. Okay, so because if it is a transverse electromagnetic wave, if you remember, we told you that for a transverse electromagnetic wave, the phase velocity is simply omega divided by beta because beta is omega square root of mu epsilon. This becomes a constant. Okay, so this becomes a constant. So your phase velocity is independent of the frequency, so you no longer have any dispersion issues. so you can happily use this uh, guide wave guides right uh, to 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 transmit information okay so so that is advantage of a transverse electromagnetic wave so coaxial cable uh, why coaxial cable is so popular because uh, you can actually transmit a transverse electromagnetic wave on it okay aithe sir tm wave em kottadu kadu parallel plate wave gate cheppinappudu kuda so parallel plate wave gate in the parallel plate wave gate also there is a tm wave But you never say that parallel plate wave get famous. I didn't put it up like that. But coaxial cable is also famous. And now, why not parallel plate wave get is a famous one? Can you tell me why it is not a famous one? Infinite plates to the power. Yes, because the expression which we have done there is parallel plate wave get. We have taken an infinite plates, and that is not practically feasible to do. But this is very very much practical to implement. So that is why this is a very popular one because. practically you can in fact manufacture a transverse electromagnetic wave which can uh, take away all my issues with the dispersion and all okay so andikane this become a very viable solution for all kind of practical uh, guiding phenomena so anyways uh, with this said because i'm saying it's a transverse electromagnetic wave definitely it should have some line parameters right because it's a tm wave i can say that the shape of the electric and magnetic fields is not going to change with the frequency so while analyzing uh, we can analyze the line parameters so what i want to find is uh, what is the value of uh, capacitance per unit length what is the value of inductance per unit length what is the conductance per unit length or what is the resistance per unit length okay so to calculate these parameters okay what i can uh, do is because you, uh, uh, the transverse electromagnetic wave is propagating the the field structure we already got the electric and magnetic fields you can see that the electric and magnetic fields are not going to change with frequency there so because there is no frequency dependency okay means i can say at any frequency they basically have the same kind of field structure i can apply some results which i have got in the electrostatics or basically in the transverse plane i already told you because we are able to define voltages and currents when you have a capability of defining voltages and currents we are almost dealing it in a static scenario okay but though there are time varying fields here okay but that analysis can also help us to get the results here so let us try to find the capacitance okay per unit length say for example i take a coaxial cable which is of length 1 okay and i want to find the capacitance per unit length so if you want to find the capacitance per unit length you just have to know uh, what is the charge that is present on the inner surface q divided by the potential difference between these two regions right so 
means there are two ways in which you can derive the results okay either one by doing uh, finding the charge on the surface of your conductor divided by the potential adoka paddhati okay inkoka paddhati enti ante you can either find uh, what is energy inside your uh, inside oka one one meter uh, అంటే ఒక వన్ వన్ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ తీసుకుంటే ఈ వన్ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ కోఎక్సిల్ కేబుల్లో వాట్ ఈస్ అ టోటల్ ఎలక్ట్రికల్ ఎనర్జీ దట్ ఈస్ స్టోర్డ్ యూ కెన్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ టోటల్ ఎలక్ట్రికల్ ఎనర్జీ దట్ ఈస్ స్టోర్డ్ ఈస్ నథింగ్ బట్ హాఫ్ సివి స్క్వేర్ సారీ హాఫ్ సివి స్క్వేర్ ఓకే సో యూ ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ నో ద పొటెన్షియల్ డిఫరెన్స్ వి అనుకున్నా అనుకోండి హాఫ్ సివి నాట్ స్క్వేర్ ఇక్కడ వి నాట్ అనుకుంటున్నాను కాబట్టి పొటెన్షియల్ డిఫరెన్స్ వి హ్యావ్ ద ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ ఆల్రెడీ సో ఇన్ సైడ్ దిస్ వాల్యూమ్ యూ కెన్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ వాట్ ఈస్ అ Uh, electrical energy that is stored modulus of epsilon times of modulus of e square dv and also okay because i think uh, if a time average power any calculate chestam kabatti you get a 4 here okay so uh, once you once you calculate those values and you equate it on both sides you can calculate the value of c that is another way of doing it okay so ikka nenu ala energy paddathilo gaakunda i am going with the normal method which we used to do that is q by v okay సో ఇక్కడ చార్జ్ ఎంత క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేయాలండి సర్ఫేస్ మీద ఎంత చార్జ్ ఉంది అనేది క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేయాలి ఓకే టు క్యాలిక్యులేట్ ద అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ చార్జ్ దట్ ఈస్ ప్రెసెంట్ ఆన్ ద సర్ఫేస్ నాట్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ చార్జ్ ఐ మీన్ వాట్ ఈస్ చార్జ్ ఆన్ ద సర్ఫేస్ ఎలా క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేస్తామో హౌ డ్యూ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ ద చార్జ్ అంటే దర్ వన్ వే విచ్ యూ కెన్ డూ ఈస్ ఇందాక ఆల్రెడీ క్యాలిక్యులే ఇందాక ఆల్రెడీ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేసాము ఓకే సో ఫ్రమ్ ద ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ యూ కెన్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ వాట్ ఈస్ అ సర్ఫేస్ చార్జ్ బై అప్లైంగ్ ద బౌండరీ కండిషన్ బికాస్ ద నార్మల్ కాంపోనెంట్ ఎన్ క్యాప్ డాట్ d bar should be is equal to the rho s surface charge surface meda na charge ki equal avvali okay so atlaaga surface meda enta charge undi overall ga what is the total charge on the surface ani aa paddhatilo calculate cheyach adu oka paddhati okay so i'm not going to calculate even in that method so ikkada endante instead of uh, starting with a step that already the v not potential lo undi the zero degree undi and start cheyakunda okay so nen inkoka la start chestan analysis ni problem ni ela start chestan ante say for example ఈ ఇన్సైడ్ కండక్టర్ మీద అంటే ఇన్సైడ్ వైర్ మీద దేర్ ఈస్ అ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ లైన్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ విచ్ ఇస్ సమ్ కులూమ్ పర్ మీటర్ ఓకే అఫ్ కోర్స్ సార్ ఇది లైన్ కాదు కదా ఇది ఒక సిలిండ్రికల్ సర్ఫేస్ కదా అంటే అవును బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ద సిలిండ్రికల్ సిమెట్రీ లెట్ మీ ఎస్యూమ్ దాట్ ఎవ్రీవేర్ యూ హ్యావ్ సిమిలర్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ చార్ట్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ యూనిఫామ్ చార్ట్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ ఎవ్రీవేర్ ఓకే సిలిండ్రికల్గా ఎవ్రీవేర్ యూనిఫామ్ చార్ట్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ ఉంటుంది కానీ అక్రాస్ ద లైన్ maybe let me assume a charge distribution of uh, some rho l uh, is the line charge distribution coulomb per meter on the wave gate okay one second anna so uh, uh, you have this uh, charge density for example ee line meda ante na telusu ante ikkada ila conductor unnappudu idu oka surface ga batti sorry surface meda surface charge density untadu kada so sigma is surface charge density raayal kada ante nenu em antanu ante cylindrical symmetry undi ga batti nu ye line teeskunna aa line meda same amount of charge untadi okay so instead of dealing with a surface charge density i'm saying that maybe i'll deal with a line charge density okay on the inner conductor that makes the analysis more easier okay so the line charge density of course it doesn't matter no charge density in this kind of chevra answer okay so here uh, so let me assume some line charge density of rho l okay so line charge density rho l undi an anukunte ఓకే రోయల్ నాట్ అని తీసుకుంటాను ద లైన్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ ఆన్ దిస్ ఈజ్ రోయల్ ఓకే సో వాట్ ఈస్ ఎలక్ట్రిక్ ఫీల్డ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ సమ్ లైన్ చార్జ్ ఓకే చుట్టూ ఒక లైన్ చార్జ్ ఉందనుకోండి విచ్ ఇస్ ఆఫ్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ రోయల్ యూ రిమెంబర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద గాస్లో ఫర్ అ లైన్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ ఎవ్రీవేర్ ద ఫీల్డ్ అరౌండ్ విల్ బీ లైక్ రో క్యాప్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ రో డివైడెడ్ బై టూ పై ఎప్సిల్ నాట్ రోయల్ బై రో అని వస్తుంది ఐ థింక్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఇఫ్ యూ రిమెంబర్ we have derived it we can derive it from the gauss law 
you can take a Gaussian surface and you can calculate the electric field for this expression these kind of charge distributions so you get an electric field like this from the electric field you can calculate the potential difference so the potential difference v naught say the potential difference between the inner and outer conductor so usually potential difference lr as the minus uh, reference point reference point in the outer plane okay say for example the outer plane b and f and the one the e and quantity i think that okay so outer plane uh, uh, is uh, b and inner plane is uh, a times e bar dot dl bar and the vector which goes uh, dl bar it ended to radially going this electrical coordinate system was just now but you get a duro okay so you could a dl rally so you get a dl place lane right and a zero times of row cap right so e bar and a end at a monkey cream are all at electric field action that you can put that e bar of course you could a e minus net is a c then i can write from a to b and i can do e bar dot zero times a row cap okay so that is what it is that is done here so if you do that you get v naught is equal to something like this of course you remark in the code of chandy but without the charge density expression so here you can see the charge density is rho l by 2 pi epsilon naught r into ln of b by a so this is your uh, potential function which you have so once we have the potential okay so how do you calculate the capacitance capacitance is nothing but the total charge density times the potential so what is the total charge on this uh, region and because the charge density is rho l into the length multiply just a i get the total charge okay because it's a uniform charge distribution gravity i can uh, so i get uh, uh, rho l times of uh, into one times of divided by just the you get the total capacitance per unit length so the total charge and a the total charge is nothing but uh, this rho l times of dl okay because everywhere is because i get a uniform charge distribution so what happens is the q simply becomes a rho l into the length of the line so because you took the length of the line as one okay you get the total charge that is present on the line as rho l into uh, one so if you substitute it there so you can get the value of capacitance as uh, q by v of course in any analysis on the end the line charge this congestion and you can always do it with surface charge also okay so even if you do it taking that okay now the line charge not at let's turn in a surface matter chart distribution on the sigma is an adi and on kunta because it's a cylindrical surface okay and because you're dealing with the uh, static scenario here we're assuming that the field distribution is uniform because we are finding capacitance per unit length if you assume the field distribution is uniform everywhere and uh, the then the cap then the charge distribution should also be uniform everywhere in that scenario uh, the sigma s should not be a function of z z to change out the atlani row to change and ikkada phi to kuda change out so ikkada sigma s anta meer calculate cheyachu okay you can you can start with sigma s and then you can find the field also that is another way of doing it but whatever way you always end up with the same answer okay so it doesn't matter which way you uh, do the analysis so so capacitance cut it on the chala bada the line so you can calculate it either from by taking starting it as a surface charge or either you can do it assuming because it's a uniform of cylindrical symmetry on the gravity instead of considering it as a surface charge i can consider it as a line charge some line charge rho l which is also symmetric as you walk in the z direction right along this can start just analysis to uh because line charge the analysis and do just the amount of because line charge analysis gives me electric fields more easily compared to a surface charge analysis because you can also apply the same gauss law for surface charge analysis and you can get back the electric fields it doesn't matter and the other way is uh, because we already had the expression for electric field from finding the potential function we can also find the surface charge that is present on it okay and then you can find the total charge that is present on the surface so if you remember previously i had the expression for uh, electric field like this so you got electric field expression i watch in the v not by ln of b by a 1 by rho right so if i i get uh, v not divided by ln of b by a times 1 by rho and watch in the okay so e expression can be and uh, what you can do is uh, for this expression uh, if you you if this is your electric field okay calculate what is the displacement vector d is equal to epsilon into e gravity and this is your normal component so from this normal component what you can find you can find the surface charge distribution surface charge distribution atla vastadante boundary condition apply cheyal so on the boundary what is the boundary condition 
so normal vector n cap so n cap n cap dot d bar should be is equal to the surface charge distribution so ikkada d bar ante ikkada epsilon into e bar so the normal vector is rho cap so rho cap dot e cap is equal to sigma s aval ante simply ee motham number ni epsilon tho multiply chesthe you get the surface charge distribution so you can see the surface charge distribution is like this of course this is the ante naaku ee boundary degar electric field kavali kabatti ee boundary degar rho ante enta theesukovali e theesukovali so this is the surface charge distribution so once i have the surface charge distribution how do you calculate the total charge so total charge kavali ante total charge q is nothing but surface integral of uh, okay so ikkadi mottham cylindrical surface ee mottham cylindrical surface of unit height 1 meda nenu ఎంత ఛార్జ్ ఉంది అన్నది క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేయాలి బికాస్ యూ కెన్ సీ ద చార్జ్ ఇస్ నాట్ చేంజింగ్ విత్ ఎనీ రో ఫైవ్ ఆర్ జెడ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ ఎ యూనిఫామ్ డిస్ట్రిబ్యూషన్ ద టోటల్ చార్జ్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ ద సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా ఆఫ్ ఇట్ సో ఈ సిలిండర్కి ఎంత సర్ఫేస్ ఏరియా ఉంటుంది అంటే టూ పై ఇంటూ ద హైట్ విచ్ ఇస్ వన్ ఓకే టైమ్స్ ద ఏరియా విచ్ ఇస్ ఫైవ్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఏ స్క్వేర్ అంతే కదా సో ఇక్కడ మీకు వచ్చిన ఇంటూ ద సర్ఫేస్ చార్జ్ డెన్సిటీ సిగ్మా ఎస్ so that is what i have to do oh, sorry pi a square kada na my mistake the 2 pi a into height is 1 kabatti idi surface area into the surface charge distribution anta ante surface area sigma s uniform distribution kabatti anni multiply chesthe you get the value of q so you have the value of q so now you simply have to q divide q by v not so ikkada chodandi q ante entha vachindi 2 pi a into 1 into sigma s ante epsilon not into v not by ln of v by a divided by 1 by a vachinappudu a cancel ayipoyindi okay divided by you get v not so ikkada v not v not cancel ayipothe you can see i get an expression which i got here same 2 pi so idigondi 2 pi numerator la epsilon not undi 2 pi epsilon divided by ln of v by a vachindi adhe kada vachindi ikkada kuda answer 2 pi epsilon epsilon not into epsilon ante epsilon okay so it doesn't matter which method means you can do the analysis with surface charges or you can do it with line charges i can tell you you'll end up with the same answer okay because basically we are assuming a static analysis and we say that the charge distribution is not changing then we are trying to find the capacitance per unit length here okay right so this is your capacitance expression how do you calculate the inductance per unit length inductance per unit length kavali ante what is the flux change that you need to calculate so for a given current there is a magnetic field everywhere that is going around like this okay so current another time to martund ankonde ee chuttu unna magnetic field lines kuda martai so meaning magnetic fields line martana appudu flux change entha avutundo naaku kavali so how much flux is changing to find the self inductance so flux change entha avutundo teliyali ante i need to choose a surface so ikkada chudandi i can take a surface like this okay and i can see through this surface the field is cutting like this ee field anna field lines cut chestunnai ఆ త్రూ దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ ఎంత ఫీల్డ్ లైన్స్ ఎంత ఫ్లక్స్ చేంజ్ అవుతుందో దాట్ ఫ్లక్స్ చేంజ్ విల్ గివ్ మీ హౌ మచ్ అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ ఇండక్టెన్స్ ఇస్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు గెట్ రైట్ సో ద రేట్ ఆఫ్ చేంజ్ ఆఫ్ మీన్స్ ఫ్లక్స్ ఫ్లక్స్ చేంజ్ నాకు తెలిస్తే ఐ మీన్ ఫ్లక్స్ చేంజ్ కాదు ద అమౌంట్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్లక్స్ దట్ ఈస్ కటింగ్ త్రూ ద సర్ఫేస్ తెలిస్తే ఫైవ్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు ఎల్ ఇన్ టు ఐ కాబట్టి సో టు గెట్ ద ఇండక్టెన్స్ పర్ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ ఐ బేసికలీ నీడ్ టు ఫైండ్ ద ఫ్లక్స్ పర్ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ అండ్ దెన్ యూ హ్యావ్ టు క్యాలిక్యులేట్ డివైడెడ్ బై ద కరెంట్ దెన్ ఐ గెట్ ద ఆన్సర్ సో ఇదొక పద్ధతి ఇంకొక పద్ధతి ఏంటి సార్ అంటే ఇంకొక పద్ధతి మెథడ్ ఇంకొక అనేది మెథడ్ ఈజ్ టు ఫైండ్ ద టోటల్ మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ ఎనర్జీ హాఫ్ టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎల్ ఇన్ టు ఐ స్క్వేర్ అండ్ ఫైండ్ అవుట్ చేసి యూ టేక్ ఏ వాల్యూమ్ ఆఫ్ వన్ మీటర్ అండ్ దిస్ రేడియస్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఇన్ సైడ్ ద కోయాక్సిల్ లైన్ ఎంత మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ ఎనర్జీ స్టోర్ అయింది అనేది క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేసి బికాస్ వీ హ్యావ్ ద ఎక్స్ప్రెషన్ ఫర్ మ్యాగ్నెటిక్ ఫీల్డ్స్ వీ కెన్ క్యాలిక్యులేట్ వాట్ ఇస్ ద టోటల్ ఎనర్జీ స్టోర్ ఇన్ సైడ్ దట్ వాల్యూమ్ అండ్ వీ కెన్ ఈక్వేట్ ఇట్ టు హాఫ్ ఎల్ ఐ స్క్వేర్ and then uh, you can from there also you can calculate the value of l okay so that is one way to calculate the inductance per unit length so to calculate the inductance per unit length because i have the expression say for example if i assume a current i is flowing around then what is the expression for current and the current the magnetic field will be going around the conductor and it will be in phi cap direction and the expression for the magnetic field is like i by 2 pi rho okay now b is nothing but mu into h ga but i can write the magnetic field like this so if i want to calculate what is the flux that is cutting through the surface ee surface lo enta flux cut chestunnana naaku teliyalanukondi so how much flux is cutting you can see that at one point ee uh, surface ni enta cut chestunnana kavali ante 
సో ఈ సర్ఫేస్ లో ఏం చేంజ్ అవుతున్నాయి ఇన్ దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ వాటర్ చేంజింగ్ ఈ సర్ఫేస్ ఏంటంటే దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ ఇస్ అట్ ఎ ఫిక్స్డ్ ఫై సో అట్ ఎ ఫిక్స్డ్ ఫై ఐఎమ్ టేకింగ్ ద సర్ఫేస్ సో రో అండ్ జెడ్ ఆర్ చేంజింగ్ హియర్ ఓకే సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద డిఎస్ బార్ ఆన్ దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ డిఎస్ బార్ ఆన్ దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ ఇస్ డి రో టైమ్స్ ఆఫ్ డి జెడ్ అండ్ వాట్ ఈస్ అ నార్మల్ టు ది సర్ఫేస్ నార్మల్ టు ది సర్ఫేస్ ఇస్ ఏ ఫై క్యాప్ ఓకే సో దిస్ ఇస్ ద డిఎస్ బార్ ఆన్ దిస్ సర్ఫేస్ సో ఈ సర్ఫేస్ మీద ఫ్లక్స్ అంటే ఎప్పుడు ఎలా క్యాలిక్యులేట్ చేస్తాం ఫ్లక్స్ ఇస్ నథింగ్ బట్ సర్ఫేస్ ఇంటిగ్రల్ ఆఫ్ బి బార్ డాట్ డిఎస్ బార్ ఓకే సో హియర్ వాట్ ఈస్ రో రో అన్నది ఎక్కడి నుంచి ఎక్కడ దాకా మారింది అంటే ఇట్ ఈస్ యాక్చువల్లీ చేంజింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ రో అన్నది ఏ అన్న వాల్యూ నుంచి ఇట్ ఈస్ చేంజింగ్ టు బి జెడ్ అన్నది ఏంటి అంటే బికాస్ యూఆర్ టేకింగ్ ఆఫ్ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ ఇక్కడ యూనిట్ లెంగ్ పారామీటర్ కాబట్టి జీరో టు వన్ చేంజ్ అవుతుంది సో ఒకటి జీరో టు వన్ ఓకే ఇక్కడ బి బార్ డాట్ ఏమొస్తుంది బి బార్ డాట్ డిఎస్ బార్ అంటే డి రో డి జెడ్ ఏ జెడ్ క్యాప్ సారీ ఏ ఫైవ్ క్యాప్ టైమ్స్ ఇక్కడ ఏ టు బి అని వస్తుంది అయితే ఇక్కడ చూడండి బి బార్ అంటే ఏంటంటే సమ్ బి ఫైవ్ కాంపోనెంట్ ఇంటూ ఫైవ్ క్యాప్ సో ఫైవ్ కే ఏ ఫైవ్ క్యాప్ తో డాట్ ప్రొడక్ట్ చేసినప్పుడు యూ గెట్ దిస్ థింగ్ యాజ్ బి ఫైవ్ ఇంటూ డి రో డి జెడ్ so ikkada dz tho indante there is no z variation in this expression so it is simply 0 to 1 becomes 1 okay so your flux simply becomes 1 times of a to b b5 times of d ro ante ikkada ee expression theesukochi ikkada substitute cheyalanna okay so this is your b5 okay so you have to substitute it there and you have to do an integration so d ro by do ro integration asu so idu gondi ikkada substitute chesanu i by 2 pi ro into d ro chese you simply get mu not mu r into i divided by 2 pi ln of b by a because inductance is nothing but phi by i so ikkada cut in the flux per unit length kabatti the answer you are getting is inductance per unit length so you get the inductance per unit length as mu not mu r by 2 pi times of ln of b by a right so this is the inductance you get per unit length parameter and uh, you have the conductance per unit uh, sorry induct capacitance per unit length also so these are the ways in which uh, you can calculate the l and c parameters uh, l and uh, c parameters for the wave gap for this coaxial line and one interesting relationship which you can see here is uh, the l and c values are independent of the frequency okay they are not depending on the frequency they are only depending upon the line parameters okay so if you if you assume that and ikkada uh, if i multiply this l and c okay l into c jeste it is nothing but mu into epsilon okay and uh, this is the relationship which is an interesting relationship which we can use l into c is uh, mu into epsilon of course if you are dealing with uh, a medium which is which is a uh, free space if if at all and usually free space this come for example if this is free space then this becomes mu not into epsilon then that becomes 1 by c c and the velocity which is uh, 3 into 10 to the power of 8 so there is no need of deriving both parameters if you can derive one value if you can calculate one value you can easily get the other value okay so that is what this relationship is saying aithe ikkada enti ante these results assume ee results anni enti ante we assume that the relativity is a real number and ikkada permittivity is anni enti ante real numbers ani assume cheskuntam but in general enti ante the medium can be lossy the dielectric medium that is present can also be lossy if the dielectric medium is lossy then uh, e- e- equations lo epsilon r ni dento replace cheyalante we have to replace it with the because if you are dealing with a lossy medium if the medium is lossy then your permittivity is a complex number okay it will become a complex number so if it becomes a complex number uh, then ee uh, formulas lo epsilon place lo em pettali ante we need to put the real part of the permittivity okay so that is what uh, we can say about this formulas so the next one which i want to derive is the conductance per unit length okay conductance g ana parameter derive cheyali so we'll derive this parameter okay uh uh one second in the next session maybe huh? 